My name is Rachel Williams, and I am playing Joy. Uh, my name is Brian Wendt, and I play the character of Daryl, and I also play the nurse. My name is Marianne Barshner, and I am playing Sammy Borden. I'm Bill Joachim, I'm playing Hank Borden. I'm Trish Cipolletti, and I have the role of Alice, who is the mother of Jack, the heart donor. My name is Ryan McNamara, and I play Jack. A friend of mine, we had matching cow onesie pajamas, and we decided to go to Giant. It's like one in the morning in our cow onesie pajamas, which was fine, it was good. Um, we got everything we wanted, and then we got to the checkout, and I realized I did not have my wallet. And so we like put everything back, but in kind of like really random places so we could go and find them again easily. And we drove home and came back, and the employees just looked at us like, why are these crazy people <laughs> and their cow onesies going up? So that was, that was slightly, slightly embarrassing. We had to deliver a monologue in my freshman year of high school. And I never did any theater as a youngster. Like, I was not a theater kid. But we all had to do it as part of English class. And there was a subset of monologues that we had to choose from, uh, male and female. I decided to choose Juliet <laughs> as, as one of the monologue I was going to deliver. For some reason, I chose the woman's monologue. I don't quite know why I did that, but that was just the monologue that seemed most interesting to me. Really, it was. I was the only boy who chose the girl part. <laughs> um, but I did, and, uh, and in the senior slideshow, sure enough, they had a picture of me wearing the Easter grass hair and my mother's dress delivering the Juliet monologue. That was embarrassing. Not really. Okay. I loved it. Yeah, it was the closest thing I could think of. <laughs> I don't remember what show it was, but there was a play that I did where at the moment there were two actors on stage. I was one of them, and I had two bits of dialogue that were very similar at two different points in the play. One of them, I said the line and I stayed on stage. And the other one, I said a very similar line and I exited and I got them mixed up. So I said my line and I made a good exit and out the door and slammed it. And then there was this long drawn out silence. And I realized I was supposed to be back on stage. So I yelled my next line from off stage and then made a grand entrance back on. And it probably was noticed, but we just carried on. But it really, I didn't forget it and get it mixed up anymore. I can remember I was on, on stage in a play and uh, I happened to be standing right center stage with several characters on the, the set at the time and one of the characters went up on his lines and I, I was, as I say, I was standing center stage. I was also the older brother in this play. When this guy went up his line, there was just dead silence as there is on stage and everybody looked at me. You know, it's like, <laughs> well, get us out of this and I had no idea what where we were, what we were doing, who went up on the line or anything. I was totally lost in the thing. And I finally thought of a line, and I threw that line out there. The problem was that line was about a page and a half further on in the script, which meant that people had to scramble to get into other positions. People up in the booth were trying to find what light cue and sound cue that was coming up all of a sudden. It just threw everything off. And then we went on from there, and the audience never had a clue that anything went wrong. <laughs> I was in a show and I am the kind of person that does not I don't don't hug me don't touch me I'm not a touchy feely kind of person I'm very awkward with that um, and I had to do a stage kiss in this show which gave me anxiety to the point of almost throwing up when I had to, to do this Seriously, it's bad really bad that's my own thing it wasn't the person it was my own thing my best friend on opening night um, after the show, uh, we all went out, like actors do, after opening night, um, because she thinks it's hysterical that I was this panicked about having to do this. She sends me a text that comes up on my phone and says, so how was that kiss, ha ha ha. And at that time, uh, you could read the text on my phone. The 
bad part about it was the person I had to kiss read the text before I did, and I had to sit there and explain, no, it's not because I, it's not that, so I think he thought that I was super excited that I had to kiss him, when actually I was mortified, and they're trying to explain that. I will say the moral of the story is um, I now have it so my phone just comes up text message. It doesn't read it anymore. <laughs> Honestly, I don't get embarrassed. I, I think any actor who goes on stage pretty much puts it all out there. We would understand it to be supposed to be embarrassing. You know, like, have I flubbed my lines? Yeah. Have I tripped on stage? Yep. Have I spilled stuff? Yep. You know, all these things I've done, but it, we just blame it on the character. So it's not Brian who gets embarrassed, maybe the character does.